If that don't make your feet dance around and get you a little excited, I don't know what will. Amen? Amen. I shouldn't have had to call for amen. Now, we're going to have to have a little training session before we get started this morning. If you think something is good from the Lord, not because Fred said something good, but if you think you have... say anything about the goodness of God. Just, you know, let's not proclaim anything we've done or man has done, but let's proclaim what God has done. Amen? And just, I'm surprised you didn't stand up when she was singing, I'm alive, I'm alive in Him. You haven't forgotten that one day you were, or not, not so long ago, you were dead in your trespasses and sin. And when Jesus came on the scene, you were made a, alive. Everything about you came back to life, sprung forth. Whew, I'm going to have a conniption. You can stand there and be silent still if you want to. Acts 4.12 says, Bibles out, go ahead and get your pen, pencil out, piece of paper, bulletin, uh, scrap paper towel, tissue, whatever you've got. You'll be five times more likely to remember what we've shared in the service this morning if you write it down. Five times more likely. So take your lipstick, mascara ladies, whatever you want to write with. If you didn't bring a pen, men, well, I started to say take out your pocket knife. We don't want you carving any wood in the sanctuary this morning, so uh, try not to do that, but try to make a few. God's word as we read it together. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, if any consolation of love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by thinking the same way, having the same love, sharing the same feelings, focusing on one goal. Do nothing out of rivalry or conceit, but in humility consider others as more important than yourselves. Everyone should look out not only for his interests, for his own interests, Form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even to death on a cross. For this reason, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Let's pray together. Lord, this cross. And help us to proclaim the name of Jesus to all those around him. As your word says, every knee will bow to the name of Jesus. Lord, that our tongues would always confess Jesus Christ is the one and only Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So I want to share with you this morning, what's in a name? What's in a name? I want to share this story with you. How many of you remember Peekaboo? Peekaboo
famous skier. Between training on the slopes and traveling around the world, she managed to get an education and earn a degree in nursing. Early in her nursing career, she was assigned to work briefly as an intensive care unit nurse in a large metropolitan hospital. She did outstanding work, but there was a slight problem. The head nurse had to tell her not to answer the phone in the ICU. Because of the confusion it would, it would cause when callers would be connected to the ICU and they would hear her say in her best professional gets the joke, has had a good laugh about the joke, but since childhood she's been teased about her name that her parents gave her, who got it from an Idaho town that takes its name from a Native American word meaning shining waters. Peekaboo means shining waters. So don't leave here thinking that she really did answer a phone saying, Peekaboo, I see you. Her name means shining waters. What does your name mean? What's in a name? I grew up Everybody with that last name was a negative person in our community. She said it was in their blood. And that was the attitude. Now, she was an intelligent woman, educated, but that was her attitude about people in the world. And, and she trained young minds in that same light. But I would share with you, we don't all have to be the same as whatever our last name brings to the table. We all... make a name for yourself. How many times have we heard you need to get out there, work hard, do your best, get an education, and make a name for yourself? I want you to allow the Holy Spirit to work and move talking to you about that statement this morning. Make a name for yourself. Where would that take you in life? They want to see their names in the bright lights. It means something to a lot of people to see their name on a marquee. In fact, I was teasing with Jimmy Double this morning. Some, some people didn't know that I was going to be preaching this morning. I said, well, next time we'll just put my name on the marquee. But I'm not one of those people. I don't want my name on a marquee. But we studied those books. I remember one trip we were on before Celeste was born and we were just laboring about what we were going to name this little girl we were about to have and looking through those books as we traveled on vacation to figure out what appropriate name for her would be and what it, what it would mean. It was important for us to know and name them for what a, uh, what a name would be.
and, and uh, allow you to participate for, for a moment. And just tell me, you can just shout it out or speak it out so, so that I can hear you. But when you hear the name of Jesus, what does it bring to you? What does it bring to you? What does it mean to you, the name of Jesus? He is what to you? Savior. He's my Savior. during the prayer time that he has paid that debt in full. He has redeemed us. Jesus is, say that again, Savior. Savior. Jesus is, say that again, Father of Peace, okay, and John, Teacher. He is the great Teacher. You know if you proclaim the name of Jesus, you're going to be hated, right? We see all this news and the Jews being hated and despised. There's a reason behind that, you know, because they, now the Jews don't believe Jesus was the Messiah, but because they worship God, Yahweh God. And you will be hated. Jesus told his disciples before he left, he said, they'll run you out of the synagogues and the temples I pray that we don't become that people, those Pharisees and Sadducees that did that. Let's look at Philippians 2, 9 through 11. Philippians 2, 9 through 11 says, and this is, this is an exciting part of the scripture here, For this reason God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bow. Let's stop right there. One reason the world's going to hate you if you take on the name of Jesus, you proclaim the name of Jesus, is because... is that to make a name for yourself, it means you lessen the name of someone else. That'd be a good thing to write down. If you're so busy at making a name for yourself, climbing the ladder of success, then you're going to have to step on someone on one of those rungs to lessen their name so your name is greater. I don't believe that's what was being taught in the first part of in my life that I've needed to read that and know that. Making a name for ourselves, I don't believe ultimately is what God has in mind for the church. Amen? The church is to be busy about making the name of Jesus great. And when you make the name of Jesus great, you'll see things start to change. One thing that you'll see start to change is yourself and your own life.
kingdom of God will change. You'll start to see people get saved. You'll see, see people start to think more spiritually because your conversations will change. When you focus on the name of Jesus, that fear I mentioned earlier, we become like the Pharisees and Sadducees when we focus on our In fact, it goes on to say, so that the name of Jesus, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth. In the world in which you live, in your relationships with your family and friends, in your relationships in your workplace, let me just ask you, how many knees do you ever... Historically, it is because traditionally to kings and other people, you would see people bow in a, at, out of a matter of reverence and respect to a king or authoritative figure. But trickled on down into marriage that a man would bow in humbleness before his prospective wife out of respect. He would humble himself. And so it's a sign of being humble. And so with that in mind, around your workplace, around your family, how many knees do you see bow? like I'm having some pine trees cut beside our house and in those pine trees I was talking to Sam Coleman this morning there are a lot of vines I mean a, I don't mean some vines I mean I mean you would think I'm growing vines it's amazing how many vines there are in that small tract of timber you see with so many vines those pine trees can't grow the way they ought to be able to grow in fact it chokes the life out so that I'll be proclaiming the name of Jesus and not the name of Fred. If we saw knees bowing around us, we would see relationships reconciled. We wouldn't have the train of thought that, well, what I'm going to seek what's best for me. I only want what's rightfully mine. I only want what I've worked hard to get. Let me just tell you, church, you've worked hard to get nothing. Jesus But no, make it personal to you. You'd be surprised they'll bow if you'll bow. They'll bow if you'll initiate it. The world hates Jesus because He's exalted. The world's going to hate you because you're not seeking to exalt yourself, but you're seeking to exalt Jesus. So what exactly does Jesus' name bring to us? I would say to you this morning, it's the game changer. It's the game changer.
I would say when Jesus came on the scene, it was the game changer for all of us. And I just want to share with you this morning out of some other scriptures, and you can jot down the reference about what changed the game in Jesus' name. In John 14, 13, it says, Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask something in Jesus' name, according to His purposes, He will do, calling out and asking in His name changes. will provide you with what you need to receive. We've all been, some of us have been in those situations, right? If we proclaim the right kind of name, you know, some of you have gotten a speeding ticket and you were told, well, if you'll go down to the sheriff's department and ask for so-and-so and tell them I sent you. Now, if you left off that part about who sent you, guess what? That ticket might not get taken care of, right? Because your name in that moment You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Have you ever had to justify anything? Jesus said you were justified in Him. In other words, your life was made right according to God looking on. Your life was, in fact, because you were filthy in your sin, disobedient, after you put your faith in Christ, now God looks on you a, a good... torn apart, filthy, ugly. God cleaned me up, set my feet on a firm foundation in Christ. In fact, in Psalms it says, He pulled us out of the miry clay and set our feet upon the rock. This morning, have your feet ever been set upon the rock? Are you still wallowing around in the miry clay? Luke 10, 17 said, The 72 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. I would tell you, you want a, you want a sure way to defeat Satan? You want a sure way when he's tempting you and attacking you to overcome Satan and his demons? Just speak the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Just speak the name of Jesus. Wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. I thought about his healing. At the name of Jesus, there's healing and forgiveness. I thought of the woman that touched his garment. He said, go, your faith has made you whole. How many of you in the room this morning have been healed at the name of Jesus? You've been forgiven at the name of Jesus. You've been strengthened when you were exhausted and had it 
in might. He's mighty. He's mighty to save like we sing. His name is above every name. We need to start living for the name of Jesus, church, and, and stop living for the name of Mount Vernon, and stop living for the name of, and place our last names there, and stop living for all these names we've created, but live for the name of Jesus and allow God to make in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus brings about everything. Everything we need in this life, the name of Jesus brings about. Romans 10, 13 says, For everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Doesn't say could be, doesn't say might be, but if you call out on the name of the Lord in faith, it says will be. And since they saw the man who had been healing standing with them, they had nothing to say in response. And after they had ordered them to leave the Sanhedrin, they conferred among themselves saying, And that's, listen, it didn't just happen last year. It didn't just happen during Barack Obama's presidency. I mean, we focus on, we major on the minors and minor, minor on the majors. This has been going on since the time of Jesus and the early disciples. They're being squeezed out. They're being shunned. They're trying to be shut down. They said, listen, don't preach or teach the name of Jesus any longer. It didn't happen with Madeline Murray O'Hare taking prayer out of our schools. It happened in Bible... up about something here. We've got people in our county that have not seen and heard about Jesus. You say, no we don't. Yes we do. We've got people growing up in homes that are not taught about Jesus. You might disagree. You can disagree with me all day long, but how about linking arms with me and let's go tell them about Jesus. Come into the middle school and help us tell them about Jesus in the high school and help us tell them about Jesus because they're not getting it at home. Body. It's not about offending anybody, church. It's about loving somebody. How much do you love others that you don't want to see them enter the pits of hell and, and you do want to walk with them on the streets of gold? It's not about offending people. It's about loving people. You see, Satan sold you a lie and you don't even realize it. Satan told you to love yourself with all your heart, soul, and strength and you've done a good job of it and I've done a good job of it. We love ourselves so much, we believe.
There's a song your teenagers singing, light, light, light it up, light it up, light it up. It's not talking about Jesus. You see, we want everything lit up in the world's eyes. We, we want to light it up, power it up, twerk it up. What we need to be doing is lifting up the name of Jesus. The invitation is this. 1 John 3 says, for yourself I'm not talking about whose name you're living out I'm talking about in faith totally trust in Jesus have you taken his name to replace your name because 1 John 3 says if we've responded to Christ and his love God has adopted us and now we have his name I don't understand that adoption why a holy God would love us that much to adopt us but he did through Jesus others. The altar's open for you to come and pray. In faith, what are we doing with the name of Jesus? Let's pray together. God, we love you and we praise you. Lord, if we lift up any name, we want it to be the name of Jesus. We pray that you'd show us how. We pray that you would empower us. Lord, help us Jesus, love those people who are hurting in this world. And sing along. You know the song, the title of the song is... and pray with you. If you want to respond to the name of Jesus to say, I need Jesus to save me, now's your chance to respond. As you just bow, you can pray. You don't even have to come to the altar. You can do business with God right there at your pew. As we all sing and pray, I have decided to follow Jesus.